All right, everyone. I'm thinking this thing is good. All right. Welcome back. Again, if you have any questions, um, you need any help, or you need me to override something, um, we'll do that after this whole lecture period. Okay. And uh, let's get started. All right. Tonight is chapter seven. Um, starting off with specialized functions, using date, logical lookup, database, and financial functions. All right, the objectives of this chapter are to use the date functions, create a nested logical function, use advanced lookup functions, apply advanced filtering, manipulate data with database functions, use financial functions, and cre create a loan amor amortization table. Sorry, there's a lot to say. All right, so we're going to get into the date functions. Um, specifically the year, frac function, days function, and use the date, year, and month functions. All right, here are some examples of Excel date and time functions. Um, days calculates the number of days between two dates. Okay, um, starting with the end date and then the start date. And then year frac calculates the fraction of a year between two dates. So here they have an example um, of the days function. And you see it says equals days, the name of the function, B2, comma, B1. So it took the function from here, I mean, the, uh, the date 9-30-2018 as B2, B1, it took nine, uh, September 1st, two, uh, 2018, and said there was 29 days between them. Um, year fraction does the same thing. Essentially, takes two sale values and tells you the fraction of a year. Here in this case, it took B1 and B2, and it said it was 3.5 into the year, or, or uh, 0.8. Why do you use these functions? I'm not sure, but Excel can do that. Okay. Um, more into Excel and date functions today. Display is today from the first day to the last day. See right here is this day and, and serial number. So here is an example of the day function. They have day. And, and the uh, the argument is just B1, and it shows that you know it's the first day, based off that date in B1. Um, here again, this is day E1, and the date as you can see is June 30th, and this is the 30th day. All right, same thing with the month function works the same way. Month the serial number is the uh, the argument. Here they say equal month. And B1, and it saw that in B1 is September 1st, 2018. So the, re the result was nine. Same thing with the example here for June. And year works essentially the same way. Okay. I looked at the date in B1 and returned the year as the argument. Now we're going to move into nested fu logical functions, um, creating a nested if function using the and function, and, nest, and nesting an and function, and nesting an or or a not function. All right. Um, a few prior chapters before this, you started working with some if statements. And you can also nest your if statements to make them more to make a more complex formula. So here, they have this diagram to, to work it out for you before you see the actual formula. So in this example, they have a bonus amount, date and percent, and in hired before, hired on or before, hired after, based on these dates. So if you're hired before January 1st, 2010, you get a 9% increase, hired on, or before January 1st, 2015, you get 5%, or if you're hired after 
January 1st, 2015, you get a 3%. Okay. So they need a formula to meet all these conditions. And so they use it, a nested logical function. So here you can see it diagrammed out. So if hired before 1 1 2010, if it's true, salary increase of 9%. Now, if it's false, this is where the nest, the nested function would, li would live. So if they were hired before 1 1 2010, if false, and then it asks another question. If hired on or before January 1st, 2015, if that's true, then they get a salary increase of 5%. If it's false, they get a salary increase of 3%. So that's just diagrammed out to give you an idea of how nested logical functions work. And here it is as the actual function, as the actual formula. So you see if C7 is less than C2, then it has to multiply D7 by D absolute value 2. That is this step right here, all the way up to here, if you follow this chart. If it's not true, that's where you see the nest. All right. If not true, if C7 is less than or equal to C3, multiply D7 by absolute value D3. If not, multiply by D7 to D4. All right, and you see they have that there. Okay. Um, it's important to note that in this chapter, I really encourage you when you get into one of these formulas, and they may get too deep, um, I really, really, truly encourage you to look at the solution file and look at how they're structuring the formula. Okay. Um, sometimes the, the nested logic can be a little bit iffy. Hey, Hi. Shelby, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. Now with nesting, you can use um, other operators, um, specifically and, or, or the not functions. All right. So and evaluates to true if all conditions are true. So here's the structure of the formula, and, logical one, logical two, logical three. You can use or, this evaluates to true if any of the conditions are true. So or, logical one, logical two, logical three. And not reverses the truth of the logical test. There's only one argument for not, and as you can see, it's just not, and then parentheses, the logical argument. Here's an example of the AND function. So they said equals AND parentheses B5 right here. So B5 equals manager. And you notice that they put the word manager in quotes because you're looking for a word. So if you're looking for a specific word, you have to put it in quotes. Then, and then it says D5 salary. It's less than to 70,000. So here they wanted to see managers who may, I'm sorry, here they were trying to figure out who is identified as a manager and they make less than 70,000. So based on this formula here, they found these people here. All right. Now we're going to move on to advanced lookup functions. Um, you already learned about VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP. So there are more functions that you can use, more lookup functions. Um, index and match. All right, so the index returns a value at the intersection of a specified row or column. All right, what that means here, let me break down this formula. So it's equals index parentheses array, which means the group 
of cells that you, wanna, you need to find the indexed. So in this case, they use A2 to B5, that's the array. And then they said um, row number three, which is right here. And column two, or the column number, and it returned a result of 8,445 because that's the third cell at the intersection of this array. This is the match function. It searches through a range for a specific value and returns the relative position. So here it's match, and the arguments are the lookup value, the lookup array and the optional argument of match type. So here in this example, I have equals match, parentheses, B7. This is the lookup, see, the value they want to look up. The array, B2 to B5. And they said they found and then match return three, meaning this value was found in the third position of this, of this array. All right, so again, this is a lookup function. All right, now we're gonna move on to advanced filtering, uh, creating a, cri a criteria and output range and applying a uh, advanced filter. All right, so if you're given a large data set which is basically a, a spreadsheet with a whole bunch of data inside of it or a database with a whole bunch of data. Um, you want to filter through it to see uh, specific information. So advanced filtering allows you to um, filter out a criteria range. And here in this slide is just showing you an example of advanced filtering with a criteria range specified. So here, they're just filtering out salaries that are greater than 30,000. More examples of that in advanced filtering when you apply it. And then you see the filter and the copy results are right here. You get to that screen from the data tab and filter, and then you go to advanced filtering or advanced filter, and it brings up this window. And within this window, you have several options. Um, I guess filter to list in place or copy to another location. This is something that's gonna come up on your homework. This advanced filtering, the criteria range. Okay, just know you find it under the data tab. Okay, and here you specify the list range. Okay, so first you, in this example, they chose copy to another location, and they said the location is A26 to E26, and they listed the range including the headings. And you see when it copied it here, it basically took the headings from up here from this data list and repeated the same headings down here into your filter criteria range. And then you said, and then you have a specified criteria range, including the labels. This is basically where you want the results to show and then it said A22, what does that say, E24? I can't really see that. Oh, up here. All right now we're gonna move on to uh, manipulating data with database functions. 
um, using the uh, dsum, dAverage, dmin, and dmax, and dcount functions. Everything begins with D because it stands for database. All right, you use these functions inside of a database. All right, the database functions has three arguments, database field and criteria. Um, database means the entire data set. Field means the column that contains the values operated on by the function. And the criteria defines the conditions to be met by the function. All right, so here are some of the database functions. dsum adds the values to match specified conditions. So again, database field criteria. D average determines the average of values that match specified conditions. Same arguments, D average equal equals D average, parentheses, database field criteria. And D max identifies the highest value that match specified conditions. See, equals D max and ask for the same arguments. Uh, more functions, D min. Identifies the lowest value to match specified conditions. Decount counts the cells that contain numbers that match specified conditions. All right. And this example here is an example of the dsum function. So he says, you see, it says dsum a6 colon e19, which is the database. Okay, and then E6, which is the field name, and then the criteria, which is A22 to E23. And return the sum right here. Here they have other examples of like D average, D max, D min, but they don't have the <laughs> um, formula written out in this example. Okay, now we're going to talk about financial functions um, using the PV function or present value, using the FV function or future value, using the net present value function, using the NPR or number of payments functions and using the rate functions, or a number of payment periods, as I say, did, NPER. All right, these are the Excel financial functions. Um, PV, or present value, calculates the current value of an investment with a fixed rate. Number of payments and payments. So the formula is equals PV, parentheses, rate, number of payment periods, payment, and the optional arguments, future value, and type. Future value calculates the future value of an investment, giving a fixed interest rate, term, and payments. Okay, and again, it's very similar to PV, but you just use equals FV, and you supply it with these arguments. Net present value cal calculates the net present value of an investment, given a fixed rate and future payments that may be identical or different. It's equals NPV. Give it the rate, value one, value two. Here's an example of the PV formula. Payment periods 20, B5, payment B4, and give the present value of this loan here. Here's an example of future value. You notice that the, they put negatives in front of these PVs and the FVs to make the, the figures um, positive. They did that because this is a loan, okay? Um, it 
and when you're representing debt, you know, you want to show it as a positive figure. Um, so here's the future value example. So they took B11, the rate from APR 7%, B10, number of years, which is 40, and B9, the payment amount, 3000 And here's an example of the net present value. All right. Um, moving on to Excel financial functions, the NPER calculates the number of payments for an investment or loan given a fixed interest rate, periodic payment, or present value. So here's formulas equals NPER rate, payment, present value optional arguments, future value and type. And uh, the rate financial function calculates the periodic rate for an investment or loan given a number of payment periods, payment or present values. So rate, number of period payments, or uh, payment, present value, Um, one thing to mention about periodic rate is that the periodic rate is basically taking your interest rate and dividing it by 12, okay? And that's like every period is one month. So you're paying a percentage of that interest rate per month. So in this case, 0 .4, 0 0.44 you're paying 0.44% every month on your 5.25% loan, okay? So here, you know, they took B11, which is the number of pay payment periods, which is 12, and multiply it by B12, which is four. Okay, and I, they got there that, that's how they got their number of payment periods for rate. And then they did minus B10 to put in a monthly payment. And then B9 for the present value of the loan, which is $30,000. And that's how they got their rate, the periodic rate of 0.44. Now we're going to move on to um, an um, amortization table um, using the IPMT function, using the PPMT function, and using the um, um, cumulative interest payment function. And this is the cumulative principal function. All right. Um, here's an example of the IPMT function, or the interest paid over the, the life of this loan, okay, you see right here in payment period one, or payment number one, uh, the person paid $68.50 in interest, okay. Their monthly payment was $660, but they paid 68, 68 bucks of that went to interest, and $592 of it went towards the principal. Okay. Um, IPMT calculates the periodic interest for payment for a payment period on a loan or an investment given in a, a fixed interest rate term of payments. And the argument is IPMT rate um, A number, a number of payments in present value. So here in the rate, they did B3 
divided by B5, which is the number of payments, and that's how to get the rate. Then they took A8. And then, in addition, you can use, use the PPMT. This calculates the principal payment for a payment period on a loan or an investment given a fixed interest rate, term, or payment. Um, cumulative interest payment, or CUM, IPMT. And again, I'm going to say this again. You know, I'm, I'm throwing out all these functions, right? And you see they're all different, and you use them for different cases. This is where the solution file really comes into handy to look at all these functions, okay? So if you do control and the tilde, you can show formulas, all right? I want you all to know that. Um, cumulative Principal calculates a cumulative principal through a specified payment period. <coughs> yeah, see, I think they had this slide in here twice. Okay, so in summary, these are the additional Excel functions. We talked about date, logical, and lookup. Day, day, month, and year, if, and, or, or not, index or match. Um, database functions, D sum, D average, D min, D max, and D count. And uh, financial functions, PV, N, P, F, E, near present value, number of payment periods, rate, um, interest payment, uh, principal payment, cumulative interest payment, and cumulative principal payment. And if you have any questions, again, call me over, look at the solution file, and that's the end of Chapter 7. Now we're going to do these videos. As the new accounting assistant, your goal is to overhaul the salary worksheet for efficiency. To do this, you will use date, logical, and lookup functions that will automatically determine bonus. As the new accounting assistant, your goal is to overhaul the salary worksheet for efficiency. To do this, you will use date, logical, and lookup functions that will automatically determine bonus and raise amounts. Your first task is to calculate how long each manager and representative has worked for the company. You will use the year frac function to calculate the difference between an employee's hire date and December 31st, 2018. The function arguments dialog box opens for the year frac function. Cell E7 contains the hire or start date for Adams. Cell F2 contains the comparison date of December 31st, 2018. Change the reference to cell F2 to a mixed reference to keep the reference to row two absolute so that it does not change when you copy the function down the column. You change the result to a number format with one decimal place. You copied the function down the rest of column F.
Finally, you adjusted the column width. The purpose of showing at least one decimal place in a, in a result of a year frac function is to indicate the fraction of a year, such as 4.3 indicates four years and one third of another year. True or false? True. Each employee's bonus scale is based on years of service with the company. Because there are three tiers, 9%, 5%, and 3% based on three cutoff dates, your best method for automating the bonus process is a nested if function. When creating a nested if function, multiple if statements are used together to allow multiple logical tests and multiple values if true. The logical test compares the higher date in cell E7 to the date for the first bonus in cell I2. If the logical test is true, you multiply the salary in cell G7 by the 9% in cell J2. If the logical test is false, you must perform another logical test to determine which of the remaining two percentages to apply, 5% or 3% based on the higher date. After entering the function, you format the result with a counting number format with zero decimal places. Which situation would benefit from nesting an if function if the value if false argument of another if function? See, you want to calculate the discount where three conditions exist to determine the discount. The company recommends all managers make at least $70,000. Therefore, any manager who makes less than $70,000 is due for a raise. In this instance, you have multiple criteria but only two outcomes. You will nest an AND function within the IF function to minimize the number of logical tests you need to perform. Use the AND function to test to see if both conditions are true, that D7 contains manager, and that the salary in G7 is less than $70,000. If both conditions are true, the function displays do for raise. If either condition is false, the function displays n slash a. After entering the formula, you copy it down the rest of the column. You want to provide a search feature to allow users to enter an employee number to retrieve that person's title information. Due to the nature of searching across multiple columns, VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP is not an option. To achieve the desired results, you decide to use INDEX and MATCH. When used in conjunction with each other, INDEX and MATCH are a powerful tool in Excel. The index function is a lookup and reference function. You enter the range for the entire data set in the array argument. You then nest the match function in the row num argument to locate a match for the contents stored in cell B1. Once the match is found, Excel goes to the fourth column to return the job title. When you type 4070 in cell B1 and press enter, the index with nested match function in cell returns account rep.
why would you nest a max function a match function within within an index function? Because the match function returns a relative position of a value, which can then be used to return a, a related value to a specific location. The unique business needs of your employee worksheet require the use of various specialized functions nested together. Moving forward, it is important to remember that while one function may not be able to complete a task, you may be able to nest several functions together to obtain the desired result. Is anyone here doing internships? You are? Mm -hmm. Are you working with any spreadsheets or anything? Mm -hmm. All these things that you're learning in this class, like if you um, brought this up at interviews or whatever, you know, people would be impressed with what you're learning because Excel is very useful. So just something to keep in mind. Your coworkers would like the ability to enter criteria to quickly search the data set. While there are several methods for completing these tasks, you would like to make them as user-friendly as possible. You choose to use database functions and advanced filtering to add the required functionality. You use advanced filtering to set specific criteria ranges that Excel will use to filter the data. You copy the column labels from the original data set to be used to filter the data. Excel then uses the column labels to match the data. That's important when you're doing this criteria range that you copy the column labels, okay? And you see how they said criteria range and output range? There's something a lot of students miss. Why must the criteria range in an advanced filter contain at least two rows in one column? One column contains one or more field names and the second row contains the criteria. You are ready to enter the conditions in the criteria range. You want to filter the data to show only account reps who are in Boston, so you enter the criteria in the respective cells in row 26. When an advanced filter is performed, it can either filter the original data set or copy the data set to a new location. Since you do not want to alter your original data, the advanced filter places the results in the output range you just created starting in row 30. The list range is the range containing the data set. The criteria range includes the column labels and the row or rows containing the criteria. The copy to contains the column labels for the output range. The output range contains four records. What is the benefit of copying data when performing a advanced filter? All of the above. The original data set is not altered. You can display a copy of the records that meet the criteria in a different location. And you can use the criteria range to specify conditions for using database functions. Database functions are very similar to advanced filtering. The difference is that database functions have the ability to perform calculations. Since you want to determine the average of account rep salaries from Boston, you will use the dAverage function to perform the calculation. You specify the range of cells that make up the list or database, the field or column that you want to average, and the range of cells that contain the criteria. The average salary for account reps in Boston is $44,813.
why would you use the d average function instead of the average function? The d average calculates the average of a subset of data based on criteria rather than the entire data set. So you know that first argument is asking is database is basically, you know, you got to tell d average what um, group of cells you want it to average. Many basic functions in Excel have database function counterparts. Instead of manually attempting to determine the lowest salary, highest salary, and number of account reps from Boston manually, you use Excel's database functions, dmin, dmax, and dcount. Similar to their basic counterparts, each of the aforementioned functions will return the smallest, largest, or count numbers in a database. Advanced filtering and database functions are an incredibly useful method of gathering information from a data set. In your business environment, using these functions will provide the most information with minimal input requirements. Your location managers want new company cars. Before you approve the expense request, you want to analyze the investment with an amortization table. You will use several financial functions to complete the task. Before beginning the mortgage amortization table, you first calculate basic information necessary for the remaining calculations, such as periodic interest rate, the total number of payments for the loan, and the present value of the loan. First, you will divide the APR by 12 to calculate the periodic or monthly rate. Next, you multiply the number of years by 12 to calculate the total number of payments. Finally, you use the PV function to calculate the present value or the amount of the loan based on four years of $450 monthly payments with an APR of 5.25%. The result is $19,444.57. Why would you use the PV function or present value function? <clears throat> you know the monthly payment, the APR, and the number of payment periods, and you want to determine the amount of the loan. While all math in an amortization schedule can be completed manually, the IPMT and PPMT functions are more efficient at completing the calculations. You use the IPMT function to calculate interest per payment and the PPMT function to calculate the principal amount per payment. You also add summary totals to several columns. After completing the calculations, you add top and double bottom borders to the end of the table indicating the completion of the data. You enter a formula to display the cell contents of cell E2 and cell B8, the starting point of the amortization table. Next, you enter a reference to cell B2 and copy it down the column to repeat the monthly payment.
The IPMT function calculates the interest of a specific payment based on the starting balance with a periodic interest rate over a specific number of payments. The PPMT function calculates the principal repayment toward the loan. Subtracting E8 from B8 calculates the ending balance after the first payment is made. You then enter a reference to the previous month's ending balance to start the next beginning balance. Then copy the formula down the column. Copy the formula in cell F8 down the column. Finally, insert a sum function at the bottom of three columns, then apply the top and double bottom border to the range. Which function would perform the same operation as subtracting the interest paid from the monthly payment? PPMT. The cumulative interest payment function is used to calculate interest paid up to a specific payment. You can use this function to calculate a running total of all interest paid after each payment. Cell E3 contains the periodic rate, cell E4 contains the number of payment periods, cell E2 contains the amount of the loan, and cell A8 contains the starting payment number. The cumulative interest for the first payment is the same as the first payment's interest. However, the formula displays a negative result, indicated by parentheses. Edit the function by typing the minus sign after the equal sign. That converts the result to a positive value. Copy the function down the column to calculate the running total of interest paid after each payment. Why would you use this CUM IPMT or cumulative interest payment function within or to the side of an amortization table? to calculate the cumulative amount of interest paid after each payment. The cumulative principal function calculates the total principal paid through a specific payment in an amortization schedule. You will use the cumulative principal function to calculate the cumulative principal paid after each monthly payment. You edit the function so that the result displays as a positive number. Something like this is one of the first things you see after you graduate from college is your loan table, your student loan table. Have any, have any of you seen that yet already? Not yet. Then you copy the formula down the column. 
the last result should equal the original amount of the loan, which is $19,444.57. Present value, interest payment, principal payment, cumulative interest payment, and cumulative principal are incredibly useful functions that help you complete the amortization schedule much faster than manual calculation. You can then use this information to determine the economic feasibility of taking on the expense of new company cars. All right, that's all I have for you tonight. Jake, that's the end of recording. Thank you. All right, have a good night. Have a good weekend.